Now it's time for RTV 101. This is the segment where we talk about practical questions to help train you to share your faith with friends and family more effectively. And it's the big one year anniversary of 2819. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to celebrate this with my friend, Dr. Fuzz Rana. You know, on our very first show, Fuzz, Hugh and I talked about the question, um, what is old earth creationism? Yeah. So I thought it'd be great if we kind of circled back mm -hmm. to that because this segment is all about kind of grounding us in our roots. So let's talk about uh, the differences between old earth creationism and theistic evolution. And mm -hmm. I thought that might make a good conversation. Sure. So let's let's start with old earth creationism. Give us a right. little definition of that. Well, I mean, as the name implies, someone who's an old earth creationist is a Christian who believes that the earth is old, who accepts the scientific dates for the antiquity of the earth, the antiquity of the universe. Old earth creationists would look at the fossil record and say, that that fossil record is a real history of life on earth. But we all are also creationists in that we believe that God directly and personally intervened throughout the history of life on earth to bring about that history and is ultimately responsible for the origin and the design of life. Uh, and so an old earth creationist would be really friendly, comfortable with the concepts of intelligent design. So we're skeptical that God chose to create through evolution. Rather, it's interventions, repeated miraculous interventions at key moments in Earth's history. That's right. Many times people will conflate old Earth creationism with theistic evolution. And that's a, a really important point is that we are skeptics uh, of the evolutionary paradigm of the capacity of evolution alone to explain the origin and the history and the design of life. Well, very good. Well, so let's talk about our theistic evolution friends, because if when we go to our local church, you know, there might be someone that we meet in our small group or our pastor or someone who has a little different point of view. So step us through that. Yeah, well, and why I think people sometimes equate old earth creationism and theistic evolution is because both positions Again, accept the antiquity of the earth. We accept the antiquity of the universe. We accept the reality of the fossil record as a history of life on earth. But the big difference is how we view the evolutionary framework. Theistic evolutionists embrace the evolutionary framework. In fact, argue that God employed evolution exclusively to bring about his creative purposes, including the creation of humanity. Whereas again, old earth creationists would reject the idea of an evolutionary history of life. Uh, also, uh, theistic evolutionists are not real comfortable with intelligent design concepts. Another big point of departure has to do with the historicity of Adam and Eve. Old Earth creationists accept Adam and Eve as real historical individuals created uniquely in God's image that gave rise to all of humanity. Whereas uh, theistic evolutionists would say with Adam and Eve, We've got a spectrum of views here. Uh, they might be not even real people, mythical or theological constructs to maybe they were representatives, but they were part of a, a group of humans that they weren't the very first humans. And in fact, they're not necessarily the ancestors of all humanity. So that's another big point of departure. And our friends at Biologos would be a ministry that would advocate for a theistic evolution position. That's right. So if people run across that on the internet, they'll kind of know like right. Biologos is theistic evolution, reasons to believe is old earth creationism. That's right. Now, in your capacity as a person who's always looking into the literature, especially in the life sciences, I'm just curious, can you tell us why you're an old earth creationist. Why aren't you a theistic evolutionist? Because I think old earth creationism makes the best sense of all of the data. Now, from a scientific perspective, when I look at the design that we see in biochemical systems or in biological systems, the only conclusion I can come to is that design truly reflects the work of a mind. But also I see some very real deficiencies in the evolutionary paradigm. It can't account for the origin of life, in fact, some of the most important transitions in the history of life really don't have very good evolutionary explanations. The origin of complex cells, the origin of body plans. Uh, so there are a lot of reasons to be skeptical of the claim that evolution can explain everything in biology. So when you couple it with the design and the inability of evolution to explain, 
uh, all of life. I think uh, an old earth creationist position is uh, preferable. Now, from a biblical standpoint, when I look at scripture, I don't know how to read scripture, particularly the creation accounts, with an eye towards God using evolution to create. It looks to me God is personally and directly involved. And once you start tinkering with the concept of a historical Adam and Eve, the theological fallout is rather extensive, all the way from biblical inerrancy, uh, what do we mean by the image of God, uh, was there a real fall, what is original sin, how do we understand the atonement, and there's all kinds of other secondary theological issues that are impacted uh, the theology of marriage, the theology of work, oh, wow. the theology of sexuality. So the list goes on and on. So when it, as a package, I think old earth creationism does a better job of accounting for the science and the biblical data. Very good. And I guess what I'm thinking now is I also know you're on the road a lot when you're talking to non-Christians. Also on social media, you're interacting with a lot of non-Christians. Wouldn't it be more advantageous to presenting the gospel if you were a theistic evolutionist? I, I mean, doesn't your position kind of put up obstacles? You know, I oftentimes hear that, that if we're going to be taken seriously by the scientific community and scientifically minded people, we've got to embrace evolutionary creationism or theistic evolution. But in my experience, that's not the case. Uh, because what I see when I... Uh, uh, see non-believers exposed to the idea that maybe God used, uh, used evolution to create, their, their comment will be at least you accept evolution, but they're not really impressed with this because many people adopt the mindset that, look, if I can explain life's origin and history with evolution, then God isn't necessary. And so it, in terms of coming up with the simplest explanation, the simplest explanation would be a naturalistic one. What I find is for people like that, you really have to dislodge them uh, from their position by showing them that there's real evidence for design in nature and that design looks like it points to a mind and give them some reason to be skeptical, even if it's momentarily, about the capacity of evolution to explain biology. And now you can help establish the fact that there is a creator and then the gospel makes sense. And it only makes sense if first you believe a creator exists. So I think old earth creationism is a better pathway to that than theistic evolution. Well, you've certainly given me a lot to think about, Fuzz. I wanna thank you. A couple points in there I haven't considered before. And I wanna encourage you, if you'd like to dig a little deeper into this question, there's a great resource that we have called Old Earth or Evolutionary Creation. And we should probably mention that our friends at Biologos call themselves sometimes evolutionary creationists. Yeah, they prefer that instead of theistic evolution. Very good.